Okay, everyone, let's start. Um, well, firstly, thanks. Thank you to you all, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out this evening to hear Reform Jersey outline our vision for moving ahead into the general election on the 15th of October. Uh, we want to use this as an opportunity tonight to introduce you to some of our new candidates, as well as to set out some of our policy commitments as a party looking forward. But most importantly, the overall message we want to send out tonight to the voting public is that there is an alternative to the business as usual attitude that has run Jersey for decades. There is another way and the timing has never been better for voters to seize this opportunity and get real change at the ballot box. Something just feels different this time. Social attitudes have changed, disaffection with the current system of government has never been higher and the gap between the island's richest and poorest has become intolerable to the majority of islanders, whatever their politics are. And those of us who stand for an alternative have never been more united or determined to make sure that the public have a choice to force social issues of economic justice on the agenda for our government. And I want to explain to you how voting for Reform Jersey can achieve that. In uh, my short time in the States so far, I've tried to show Islanders that being a politician doesn't have to be about keeping your head down, smiling for the camera, and avoiding at all costs making any political points that others might disagree with. I believe politics is fundamentally about values, integrity, and doing what you believe in. <clears throat> and I hope that I've shown over the past few months that I'm not afraid to ask difficult questions of those in authority. I'm not afraid to force important issues onto the agenda, no matter who finds them un uncomfortable. And I hope this last week in particular has shown that I and my party colleagues do not buckle under the pressure when crisis hits. We show leadership and do what is right, no matter how difficult it may be, because that is what politics should be about. In most jurisdictions around the world, including many much smaller than Jersey, political parties are at the heart of democracy. It's by organised politics based on policy, vision and leadership that the public are able to choose what sort of government they want. And in a system of independence like we have in Jersey, it's personality politics that reigns supreme and promises are broken again, again and again. Now, because of a change of the law recently that Reform Jersey proposed, the next Council of Ministers will be the first one ever to be bound by collective responsibility. That means the first thing that any independent candidate will have to do if they want to be a minister is to throw their manifesto out the window because the chief minister, who the public don't elect, will be able to overrule them or sack them if they don't toe the line. So with this concentration of power in the hands of a smaller and smaller group of people, the days of independent politics are coming to an end. The only way we can possibly restore any accountability into our political system is through party politics. Now, despite only existing for a matter of months, Reform Jersey can already point out several achievements. Deputy Southern has secured investigations into a living wage for Jersey and into abuse of zero-hours contracts, two issues which are currently causing hardship to a huge number of islanders, and we hope these will be big issues at this upcoming election. Deputy Tadia has secured the introduction of minimum housing standards so that nobody in New Jersey has to tolerate living in squalid accommodation. And just two years ago, he managed to get the states to agree to investigate the introduction of an island-wide curbside recycling scheme. As for me, if I'm thrown out of the states next month, I know that I can hold my head up high and say that I was the one who forced equal marriage onto the state's agenda. And so next year, Jersey will be taking a huge step forward for the equality agenda and we'll only do so lagging behind the UK by one year, when normally we lag behind the UK by decades. And there's a lot more we could add to that list of achievements. But there are also many things we've tried to do but have been unsuccessful. Not because we didn't have the better argument, but simply because we didn't have the numbers in the States. And so I'm asking you to imagine what we could do with eight of us in there. Now, on the morning of the 16th of October, the phone calls and secret meetings will begin as candidates for Chief Minister try to secure support from the newly elected States members. Eight votes is the difference between winning and losing, and with eight of us in the States, we could be a voting bloc almost as powerful as the Constable voting bloc. So whoever wants to become Chief Minister will have to talk to us and try to offer us policy concessions to secure our support. 
And to get that support, they'll have to commit to implementing those. Now, what are they? Well, we believe that it is wrong that in one of the richest places in the world, we charge sick people to see a doctor. We support every islander having access to see a GP free of charge, just like they have in the UK. We believe that it's wrong for new mothers to have to go back to work just two weeks after giving birth because they can't afford to stay at home to bond with their child. So we support 26 weeks maternity leave paid by the state. We believe it's wrong that when threatened with cuts to public services and a rise in GST to fill Philip Ozick's black hole, that some of the island's wealthiest citizens pay, pay a lower rate of social security than their cleaner does. We support raising the cap on social security so no vulnerable islanders have to lose the services they rely on. And lastly, we believe that Jersey's entire political system needs a radical overhaul to be brought into the 21st century. It's wrong for unelected constables, judges and church representatives to sit in the states and the over-representation of the country at the expense of the urban parishes must end. A chief minister who says they will work towards those aims can rely on our qualified support and we will be there ready to withdraw that support and put forward a motion of no confidence if they fail to deliver on that. It's that accountability and those results that could see that we hope voters will see and understand and want to get behind Reform Jersey. So the electorate this time round has an opportunity to cause an earthquake in Jersey politics and things will never be the same and I think it's about time. Thank you very much for listening.